YouTube, welcome back to WTFRC Cars. So, we're going to fix this uh, Race Star BLS 7146HV. Little brushless servo, and it's red, so it's going to match AXB, so that's where it's going to live. So, first thing we're going to need to do, we've got all the servo out and everything, and we're going to need this little thing. So, let's see if these will fit in because what you can do on these you can remove the black trim if you can't get the servo in properly and I know some of the servos are a bit of a tight fit it usually depends on this bit so it looks like it's going to be close but so if you pop that through first make sure you don't trap your wires so these servos are quite a good fit for the uh, Creighton. So, next thing we're going to want to do is get the screws in to hold the servo, and then when you're routing the servo cable, make sure you don't get it near the drive shaft because it will eat through this. So, we'll get the screws in and we'll get the screws in this mounted down to the car, and then I'll see if I can get you a close up shot of where I route the cables to stop them catching. Right, so when you're putting these servos back in, let's see if we can get you a close up. You've got the little black spacer that goes in between your red anodized bit and the servo. Then you want the thin spacer. Then you want a washer on each one of these and then the screw. And do it same on both sides. And then you want to tighten all them down. So we get these tightened down and that old servo in place. So we'll get that done next and then get it fastened in. Right, so once you've got your servo all fitted, like that you want to take the servo cable I'll see if I can put a picture somewhere around here but you want to take it underneath the drive shaft as low as you can and then up into the actual receiver box once you've got it in there plug your steering servo into channel 1 then what we're going to need to do is power up the RC and you're going to have to make sure it's bound to your controller because you're fitting the steering servo, what I would do is turn your endpoints down to 80% so you know it's not going to go too far. You're usually safe at around 80 depending on what the travel angle is of the servo. If it's a really high one, then you might want to start at at least 50 just so you don't go past your endpoints. Um, the servo in the Creighton wants fitting with the servo on up towards the middle. And then you're going to get your servo arm, get it in position but don't put it on because once you've got your servo in and connected we need to power the vehicle up, make sure your endpoints are set where you want them, make sure the servo is on forward or reverse whichever suits your servo and your RC. So the easiest way to tell that is just connect it up, move the steering right, see if the wheels turn right. If they don't then you just pop your servo on back off and reverse the servo on most radios when you reverse the servo it will move your center point which is why i'm saying don't screw the servo horn on yet so start with the servo horn off and we're going to get some batteries in and then we're going to power up the uh, exb so we'll get that done first right so once we've got everything bound up and let's see which way the servo goes so if we pop the servo on into position but we don't need to fasten it on just lift the wheels up so on this servo right screen left and left screen right so we can just put the servo back to normal And then we've got a steering moving in the right direction. We've got everything zeroed, so we can then turn it back off. Make sure your wheels are straight. And then you can put your servo horn screw in. Turn MB4 off, else it'll be screaming at us that we've lost signal constantly. So, 
All that's left to do now is set the endpoints. So at the minute we've got it set on 50% travel, that endpoint. But what we're going to want to do, if I can do this without the batteries falling out and with one hand. So, as you can see, 50% and the steering's not going very far. So, we go on to his end point. You turn it all the way one direction and then you start adding travel. And then where you see the servo binding on the servo saver, you can then start backing the steering off slightly. And you will get to the point where your servo travel is where you want it. That's not a bad little servo this one. So then you do the same on the other extreme. And you start adding until your servo stops from being able to move the servo saver. And then just back it off slightly. And then you've got nice travel both directions. Nice quick servo. And full steering in both directions without the servo saver starting to bind. That's what you've got to watch for. And you will see it. You will see the servo saver just starting to flex and you're not getting any steering movement. So once it gets to that point, you then know that your steering is trying to travel too far. And the other downside that you'll have if your steering is trying to travel too far is you stand more chance of your drive shafts popping. But when you get it right, let's see if I can show you this way around. So you should be able to see the servo arm and the slightest bit of movement at the end still moves the wheels. So if I start backing off even slightly, you still get movement in the wheels. And that's what you're looking for. If you get into the point where when you're at full lock and you back off, your wheels don't turn for the first bit of movement on your actual transmitter, that's a pretty good indication that your servo saver is taking up the slack at the end and your servo arm, as it moves, it's then releasing the servo saver and moving your wheels. If you do leave them set up like that, all you're going to do is burn your servo out because whenever you're at full lock left or right, you're constantly pushing against that servo saver and not actually trying to turn your wheels so your servo's just under stress the entire time. But hopefully you find that interesting and useful uh, if you wonder how i managed to bind the mb4 i basically got a switch and i've got a video where i show you how to wire this in if i turn it on with its switch forward it'll go into update mode if i put it in middle it's normal and it'll just run perfect as as normally and then if i switch it back and turn it on it'll go into bind mode Saves you having to take the receiver box off and mess around with buying plugs. Does save you a lot of time. But, thanks again for watching WTFRC Cars. Hope you find this video useful or entertain entertaining. If you do, pass it on to uh, friends, family and anybody else you might find it useful. And I'll catch you guys again in the next one.